Today's video is kind of one of those so-and-so picks my makeup tags. I've seen them going around. I've seen husband, boyfriend, dogs, kids, the whole nine yards. And I think it's a fun concept because it causes somebody who's not familiar with your makeup collection, may or may not even be familiar with makeup in general at all, and have them go through your makeup, pull together a bunch of different things. And then it's a bit of a challenge to see if you can create a look from what they picked. Today's makeup was completely picked for me by my stepdaughter, Kaylee. She is 13. And I asked her a few weeks ago if she would mind doing this video with me and going through my collection and picking out a bunch of makeup. She and I did it a few weeks ago and had had a lot of fun going through all the things and swatching things and she was really meticulous looking at things and swatching things and I have some of that footage I'm gonna share with you guys you know she's 13 so for her privacy and just for her age I have chosen not to include pictures of her or of her talking in here I just want to be a little bit more cautious about throwing her out onto social media so you're not going to see her talking or anything like that I hope you understand kind of my thought process on that that but we did get pictures of her kind of opening the drawers and her swatching things and trying things on. So I'm going to include all of that footage uh, throughout the video as I'm getting ready so you can kind of see her kind of making decisions and looking at things. But essentially what I did was I opened up every single drawer in my LX9 and in my other drawers over here and I basically said, okay, here is my blush drawer. I need you to pick out a blush for me. Okay, here are my highlighters, pick out a highlighter, etc." So we went through, she picked out everything herself and was really kind of thoughtful about about what she picked and you know at the time I thought she was just gonna pick whatever looked the prettiest in the drawer but I could tell she was putting a lot of thought into what maybe went together and she would pull a single eyeshadow and she'd be like oh maybe not that she'd put it back so actually at the end of the day I think she actually had a clear picture in her head. Maybe not of how I would use everything but at least as far as the color combos how she saw everything fitting together and I have to be honest I'm kind of impressed with the look that she put together. It's not a look I have ever used before. It's not a color combination that I have put together using these products and I really think it looks beautiful. I think it is a color combo that I will absolutely put together again because I just think the finished result is so pretty. So if you're interested in seeing the makeup she picked out as well as me kind of applying it and putting together this look, you are in the right place. Just keep watching. All right, so I've zoomed you guys in here and we're going to go ahead and get started with primer. So the primer that she picked out for me is actually the Physician's Formula 24 Karat Gold Collagen Serum. This is one that I actually I just got done talking about and reviewing on a roundup for spring. We've been going through all the drugstore brands for spring. I will link that video down below if you want to see all the products that Physicians Formula has released. But essentially this is like a clear serum with gold reflex in it. It's weird as these uh, flex look like they would be like chunky and stay on your skin. But once you blend them in, they just disappear. And what you get is a really nice kind of serum-like hydration so i think this would be a good primer for people who are drier and want a little bit of moisture it, but it also gives a really nice sort of tacky base to the skin you're going to notice a theme i think for some of the products she's picked because she's definitely attracted to things that are gold she wants to redo her bedroom with things that are um, i think like soft pink and gold and gray, I think is what we're leaning towards right now. So you'll definitely notice a gold theme going through the things that she's picked, which leads me to the next product she picks, which is actually from Misha. This is a signature BB cream from Misha. This is their Wrinkle Fill Up BB Cream. I am in the shade number 21. I'll give you guys a little bit of context for what this BB cream is about. Um, it says it is swirled with a white filler that covers pores and fine lines while the foundation, the darker color, is useful for covering up blemishes. Foundation can tend to accentuate wrinkles and leave enlarged pores exposed. Signature Filler BB Cream is formulated to fill imperfections in the texture of your skin, even finish. It also has SPF 37, PA++, so that means it is covering both forms of sun damage, UVA and UVB. So yeah, that is that. You can find this on the Misha website. It's also on Amazon and eBay. It's not one of the ones I think they're more commonly uh, known for, but it's funny. I'm not shocked that she picked this sort of fancy gold bottle as she looked through all of my foundations. And I actually haven't used this one in a while. So when she pulled it, I was kind of like, yeah, let's, let's play around with this. So I'm just going to pump a little bit out on the back of my hand here. And you can see, hopefully 
you can see that you get a little bit of that white kind of coming through. So I tend to like to swirl this on the back of my hand a little bit before I uh, put it on my face because I do think it needs a, just a smidge of mixing before it goes on your face. I'm just gonna put this kind of smear it around and then I'm gonna use a sponge to blend it out even further. Like a lot of Korean products, it has a light fragrance to it. I would say it has like a light sort of soapy fragrance to it. This color is actually really good for me. It's got a little bit of a grazier undertone, which looks really good on my skin tone, I've noticed. And then I'm just gonna use my L'Oreal sponge to blend this all out. It doesn't look heavy or cakey. It's one of those ones that really does like sink into your skin really well. People who like those It Cosmetic CC creams, I feel like would really like a lot of the BB creams that Misha puts out. Just really nice and smoothing, not clinging to any weird dry patches, not settling in around my nose. And that was about a pump and a half, just so you guys are aware. So yeah, looks really nice. Like this one a lot. For concealer, she picked the Julep Cushion Complexion. So this is a little cushion tipped uh, concealer that was meant to kind of be used potentially instead of foundation. So you could use this as concealer, but also, you know, just kind of blend it on your face as needed for a very natural everyday wear. This one is pretty light on me. So I am going to kind of take this down my cheek a little bit more than I typically do with concealer and blend it out. Just gonna work one eye at a time. I do think this has really nice coverage. I also feel like it is not drying under my eyes. Um, definitely not as drying as, you know, the Shape Tape. Although to be honest, when I use a small amount of Shape Tape, I don't really have a problem with it. But I if I remember correctly, I think their founder is Korean and they definitely take their skincare and their makeup products as kind of influenced from Korean beauty. Highly looks like this is not something I do all the time, but when I have a lighter colored concealer like this one that's not close to my skin tone, I will go ahead and kind of do that triangle motion and then highlight key parts of my face. To set my face, I had her pick out a pressed powder for me and I also had her pick out a loose powder that I could use for buffing. So the face powder she picked out, no shock, it is my Besame Ever After Translucent Pearl Powder. This was part of the Snow White collection. It comes with a really cute mirror here at the top and then this adorable little flat puff. This is a really nice silky powder. It is definitely translucent. It has a nice, like it does silkiness to it. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and I'm going to set this underneath my eyes. It does work for that. So I'm just going to quickly dust a little bit underneath my eyes here. And then I'm going to use my it Cosmetics brushes. This is their Velvet Luxe powder brush. I really like this sort of paddle brush. And I just like to pick up a little bit on there and then kind of pat this around my face. And it is translucent, but it has an ever so subtle hint of glow. Like I would hesitate to even call it satin, but it's not mattifying either. So this is definitely a powder I like. In fact, I kind of hope, I need to research and see if Besame makes this powder outside of this collection because this is one where it's like, I wanna almost use it up, but then I'll be sad because then I won't have my Snow White Compact anymore. So that is face set. I still think my skin looks really natural. It's not too powdery. It's not cakey at all. So definitely my preferred style of kind of applying powders. For bronzer, she picked out a Catrice bronzer. This is their Sun Lover Glow Bronzing Powder. This is another one that I just reviewed for springtime. I will link that down below if you want to get my full thoughts on it. But in a nutshell, it is a really nice glowy bronzer. It is maybe a smidge too warm for me. In fact, I may have just over applied there. We'll blend out. But it blends out really well. So even though I just kind of went a little ham on bronzer, this will blend out just fine. So it's a hint too warm for maybe for my skin tone. I think if you are a little bit more neutral or warm leaning, and then maybe fair to light, or maybe light medium, this would work well for you. And if you are really fair and really sort of cool toned, like even more so, 
Like you're, you've got real strong pink undertones. This one's probably going to be way too warm on you. For blush, she picked my Natasha Denona blush. This is the Blush Duo number 10. It has 0222 and 05 Sheer Peachy Nude. Um, I think I'm actually going to use both colors today. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this darker color here. These are both glowy. And I'm gonna put this more towards the back of my cheeks. And then I'm going to flip my brush over and pick up a little bit of this sort of light peachy blush and just put this more on the apples of my cheek and then blend it back. So that is blush on. Really pretty. For highlighter, she picked one that I haven't used in a while, which I'm kind of excited. This is the Mary Luminizer by The Balm. I wore the heck out of this for a long time. It was kind of one of the first main highlighters I bought, kind of like everyone on YouTube land, and it's one that I haven't picked up in a while. So I do remember this one was a very light gold, but it was a gold that I could still wear. A lot of golds tend to look really brassy on me. And as you can see, this one just looks more light and I don't know I mean it's gold but it's not like brassy gold so I can get away with this one so that is skin done I think it looks really pretty I think she picked out some really nicely corresponding products I really like how my skin is looking right now um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in so we can do some brow products I'm going to put on a little bit of my Urban Decay primer potion I didn't have her pick out a eye primer for me because there's really only like two in my collection sorry Mo says hi so I'm just going to put this on I like to put this primer on and then do my brows because it gives it just like a half a second to set up. For brows, she picked out my Cubrow by Benefit. I haven't used this in a while. This is shade number three. It is a fun little container. It's got a little um, angled brow brush on one end. I will say I've used that when traveling, but for the most part, I prefer going in with a separate brow pencil. So I'm just going to use this one and we'll use the brow pomade itself. And this is just an Anastasia brow pencil. So I'm just gonna pick up some of this and run it through my brows. I am not the best at brows, guys. I watch other people and I'm like, what is, I don't know. Like, some days I get look at my brows and I'm like, yeah, that looks decent. And other days I look at my brows and I'm like, what the heck did you just do? To be honest, this is looking a little warmer than I remember, significantly warmer. And it's okay, I think, because it kind of matches my hair, which is more red, but it's definitely, if you can see, it's definitely a lot warmer than my natural brow color, which is very ashy, which is interesting because when you look at it in the pot, when you look at it in the pot, it looks very, very cool toned. So it's just strange to me that it's becoming so warm when it actually goes on my eyes. So as far as applying that product, I think it goes on really well. I like the fact that it's a little bit, I don't know, waxier. It's not, doesn't lay down a ton of product the way that the Anastasia Dip Brow does. So I really like the formula of this. I just am a little kind of caught off guard by how warm my brows look today. So for eyeshadow, I may have made this a little difficult on myself. I had her pick from a number of different locations, so I had her pick a single shadow. She picked the single L'Oreal Infallible Shadow in Pink Sapphire, so I've got this to work into a look. She also picked a cream base, so I had her pick a one of my cream eyeshadows. So she picked the Ulta Beauty Cream Eyeshadow. This is in the shade Moonstone, which is just a really pretty champagne gold color. So that's really nice. And then I had her go into some of my like stick eyeshadows or liquid eyeshadows and pick one thing from those bins. And she actually picked this. So this is the Rimmel Magnifies uh, intense stay true dual ended eye pencil so you've got sort of a cream coppery eyeshadow on one end and then you've got this gold liner on this end and then for the section I think she had the most fun playing with was eyeshadow so I had her just go into all of my drawers look at anything and I said if you even potentially think it's cool or want me to use it just pull it and set it to the side and then we'll then you can lay them all out and swatch them and then pick from those so she did that she went through all three drawers she pulled out a ton of them. We ended up with this giant stack of eyeshadow palettes. She laid them all out on the ground, opened them all up, and then I gave her a bunch 
of makeup wipes. And I honestly left the room and she was in here for probably 15 or 20 minutes, swatching everything and putting it on the back of her arm. And, and ultimately the palette she picked is my Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette. You know, it's funny. I'm kind of surprised she picked this. I thought she would actually pick a palette that had a lot of shimmers or a lot of bright colors or honestly a lot of, yeah, honestly something with a lot of shimmer. So the fact that she picked an all matte palette catches me off guard a little bit, but I also think the lovely peachy scent probably was a factor here as well as the fact that it is just beautiful packaging. You can't deny how cute this packaging is. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do here. I should also tell you that she has picked a darker lip for me. So I'm trying to balance what I wanna, how I wanna work in all of these products against the darker lipstick that she picked here. Sorry, I do think I'm gonna put down just a little bit of a light cream shadow just into my crease where I'm going to blend some mattes. So I'm gonna grab this shade Peach Butter here and I'm just gonna pick this up on a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna dust this right where I'm going to apply kind of transition shades and everything. Next up, I think I'm gonna take this shade Just Peachy and we're gonna use this as our transition shade. Running this above where my natural crease is, my crease is very low because I have kind of semi-hooded eyes when you look at the camera. So for me, using some sort of shadow to fill in this space is something I do almost every day. But I do that because this is the color you're gonna see kind of first when you look at me. When my eyes, when my eyebrows are relaxed, when I'm looking straight on at you, that is the color right here that's gonna come through the most. So I like to make sure that I've got this kind of in my outer corner and then in through that kind of above crease area. And then we're gonna go into a deeper shade. We're gonna go into Peach Sangria, which is this berry shade here. I'm using a Wayne Goss number 19 brush, so kind of similar shape, uh, fluffy sort of domed shape, tapping off the excess, and then we're gonna put this right into the corner here. And then once I feel like I've got the bulk of the shade on my eye at this point, then I'm just gonna take it and start to run it into my actual crease just a smidge. All right, so we're gonna put that down and we're actually gonna move on to the cream shadow. So we're gonna pick this up. Like I said, this is the ultra cream shadow in Moonstone, really pretty cream color. And I'm just gonna use my little totally cheapy Wet n Wild. This is their concealer brush. These are 99 cents. Absolutely love this brush for laying down potted eyeshadows like this or really any cream shadow. I think it does such a nice job. And we're gonna put this kind of all over the lid. We're gonna start in the outer, or start in my inner corner here. And then we are gonna blend out. I wanna cover up the burgundy shade completely. We're also gonna work one eye at a time here. So we're gonna pause there. I've got kind of a harsh line, but what I wanna do is come in with this infallible shadow from L'Oreal in Pink Sapphire. And we are just gonna pick up some of this on our finger and kind of tap that in between where that berry shade is ending and where this rose shade is coming in. And that looks a little harsh right now, but we're gonna come back and do a little bit more blending. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other eye. All right, so now that we've got those two shadows on, we're gonna go back to this berry shade, this uh, peach sangria shade here, same brush, little Wayne Goss number 18. Tap off excess and we're just gonna kind of touch up the outer part of that eye and blend it out a little bit. And then one trick I always do, I always go back to my first transition shade, first brush to the Wayne Goss number 16, this shade in Just Peachy. Pick up a little bit more of that and then just kind of buff out this kind of top portion heading into my crease above in my transition shade just to make sure everything is nice and smooth and blended. So that's looking really pretty. I don't think I would have thought to bring in this little L'Oreal infallible pinky shadow here. I need to pull in this little Rimmel stick. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this gold end as my inner corner and I'm also gonna run some on my uh, lower inner rim. It's really pretty. It looks good all over your eyes too. You could honestly, I know it says it's a kind of the liner end, but you could really use this 
for all over your lid as well. So we're just gonna put some of that. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this other end, which is sort of a coppery color. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that on a liner brush, which I don't have, let me grab. All right, so this is just a little baby pencil brush. I'm just gonna pick up some right off of the end here because this end is a little chubby for using underneath my lash line and that is where I think I wanna use it. Yeah, that's good, it just gives a little definition. I'm gonna give that a second to set because I do wanna blend it out with a little bit of that peach shade, but if I try and use it now, I think it's gonna get really intense and strange, so I want this cream to set first. While this sets, um, she picked out an eyeliner for me, so I had her look at my eyeliner drawer. I had some potted ones and some liquid ones, but the one she ended up picking is from Etude House. So this has a brush tip applicator, which I do like brush tip applicators, but I've been using more of the ones in pen form like the physician's formula eye booster ones more than this so it's been a hot minute since i've used this i do remember really liking this formula though i remember it being very black So I definitely was scraping too much off on the sides when I first started to use it. I was struggling a little bit with the side because I didn't, I thought it was drying out. And then I realized I was just wiping too much off as I pulled it out. So on this side, I just pulled it right out of the container and went right on my eye and I got just the right amount of product. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the eyeshadow at this point. We're gonna go into our transition shade, this sort of just peachy color. I'm using a Wayne Goss little pencil brush. This is his number 20 brush. Tap this off and then we're just going to blend out just the edges here of that cream shadow. Just wanna add a little bit more peachiness underneath. All right, so I'm gonna go offline. I'm gonna throw on some mascara and then I will be right back. So that is just a couple coats of the Tarte Tardis mascara. This is one that I am testing out right now. And then my usual Clump Crusher waterproof on my lower lash line. I have to admit, I really like how this eye look came together. I think it's really pretty. I think she did a really good job picking makeup. I wouldn't have picked all these things to go together and I probably wouldn't have gravitated to reaching for this many products, but the final look turned out really nice. I would totally recreate this. I have a couple products left that I have yet to use. One is sort of my buffing powder. So the one she picked is from Milani. This is their Make It Last Radiant Powder. I'm just going to put a little bit of this kind of buffed all over my skin. My skin is looking nice and glowy right now, but I do want to use a little bit of buffing powder. So I'm just picking up a little tiny bit. This is on a Sonia Kashuk number 19 brush. I don't know if this one is still out anymore. It was part of her new line before they reset, but I don't, but I feel like it doesn't pick up just loads of powder. So I like it for just buffing a nice layer all over my skin. And I really do love this powder from Milani. I think, and I need to swatch them side by side, but my gut reaction when I first used the Hourglass setting powder, the Veil one that just came out, uh, their loose powder rather, was that it felt a lot like this powder. So just gives a nice soft, focus sort of glow to the skin. So there is that. So for lips, I had her pick two lip products. So I told her she could pick any liquid lipstick or regular lipstick in my collection. She went through all the drawers, swatched like literally all the way up and down her arm with um, different colors. And ultimately she landed on a ColourPop lippy stick. This is the shade Fab Five. So I think this was the, for their five-year-old birthday. It is sort of a lummy berry color. It's really pretty. I do love this one. It is part of their, I think, just matte lippy stick. So then I also had her pick out a gloss and told her she could pick anything out there. And she picked my Lorac Beauty and the Beast lip gloss. This is in the shade True Beauty. It's a really pale nude that has a really pretty gold shift to it. So definitely one that is going to layer over a darker lipstick, I hope pretty well. I didn't have her pick out a lip pencil because I didn't know what lipstick she was going to pick. So I basically told her, pick a lipstick. If I need a lip liner, I will find one that matches whatever lipstick you picked. So I did go grab a lip liner because this is a darker shade. I do like to line my lips first, just to make sure I have a nice crisp line and then go in with the lip pencil. So I'm going to use my LA Girl. This is the Endless Semi-Permanent Auto Liner. This is in the shade Dark Plum. So I'm just gonna line my lips real fast and then we'll come back with a lip color. So 
So as you can see, really great intense pigmentation from this lipstick. I think because I kept the eyes a little bit lighter, the lids themselves, this actually pairs really well together. I think that this is a, it went from being sort of something that could have been a little springish if I had skipped the liner and worn a nude lip to something that is a little more vampy and fall-like, but I really like that. Um, let's go ahead and put on the gloss. So like I said, this is the Beauty and the Beast gloss in True Believer. I do think I'm gonna use this with my finger because I don't want to get this wand completely filthy. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape off some onto my finger here. And we're just gonna put this in the center of their lips. I'm not sure I would have reached for something quite so sheer with a dark lip, but just having that little bit of like juiciness in the center of my lip, I actually think looks really nice. Here is the finished look using all of the makeup that Kaylee picked for me. I actually really like this look. I don't think I would have thought to put it all together, but now that it is all on my face, I think it looks pretty darn cool. And I think this may be a combo I need to remember to wear for the fall time. I think the face makeup looks really nice with the eyes and I actually think this vampy lip pairs really well with the eye makeup as well. So two thumbs up to Kaylee. Awesome job picking my makeup. I think you did an amazing job. I may have you do this in the future just to push me outside my comfort zone, make me try some new things or new combinations of things that I haven't tried before. It was super fun just playing around with makeup with her that day. Anyway, comments below how you think she did picking out makeup and putting together a look for me. I have to admit, I am really pleased with how everything came together. I hope you guys are having a great day. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.